Uh, hey guys, so, yeah, as you guys probably know by now, I've quit MCSC, and this is just a video I wanted to make, talk about that a little bit, and first and foremost, this very positive thing, don't have to worry about me in any negative way, it's been the best time of my life, honestly, um, but yeah, let's first just talk about why I'm quitting, so, it's not really anything to do with MCOC, it's pretty much just exclusively been enjoying the rest of my life a lot more. You know, my enjoyment in MCOC really hadn't changed much, the only thing that had really changed for me is that, like, you know, playing competitively, especially in Alliance War with the very strict time constraints, um, had been, you know, a lot more of a negative on me than it had been for the rest of the time that I'd spent playing competitively, and this was really the only thing that made me want to quit. Sorry, my cat's here. Hi, princess. <laughs> uh, but yeah. And yeah, I'd just been very limiting on my time can with the time constraint, and just had been, like, stressful in periods where I wanted to do other things, and you know, with that, it's just, like, didn't feel worth it anymore. My enjoyment of the mode itself and everything hadn't really changed all that much. I still was enjoying MCOC when I quit. It's pretty much exclusively just, you know, what playing MCOC competitively meant for the rest of my life. Um, and yeah, at this point, it had started to become a negative thing. Um, and yeah, that's why I'm quitting. Doesn't really get much more simple than that, but yeah. Um, and yeah, I'd first like to just say I'm very grateful for the community that this game had provided me during uh, COVID and everything. It was a very hard time in my life, of course, being very hypochondriac. Um, that with COVID and everything was like really difficult to deal with for a while. So, you know, being able to just have a lot of friends and have, you know, something always going on with the war seasons and everything during COVID made all of this like so much easier to get through and now I'm you know getting back to that point I was before COVID being extremely social doing things and yeah it's been really great and yeah I really appreciate all of the friends I've made playing this game it's meant a lot to me especially during such a hard time in my life with the hypochondria making me just isolate so much and it you know really was very damaging on my mental health having hypochondria during COVID and just had put me into a state where I had isolated like so so much and yeah that had been really tough because I'm you know I'd always been someone growing up that had been like constantly extremely social and everything so then with the hypochondria and COVID just absolutely like fucking my anxiety up all the time I was having so many panic attacks over this and yeah, having this game really just helped me get through this time in my life. You know, to be open about my mental health with COVID and everything, having the hypochondria really fucked me up a lot and made me isolate way more than I needed to. Of course, you know, there's a reasonable level of isolating with it that I definitely had to follow. I have an, an immunodeficiency, so, you know, did have to be extra careful than most people. And then the hypochondria just comes as a result of that and made this time really difficult to get through. Um, but yeah, this game provided me an escape and the friends I've made playing this game up and great. Really kept me sane during all this time and I really appreciate all that. And yeah, I'd like to just talk a bit about a ret retrospective about like my time playing MCOC just to like look back talk about things, because, yeah, this game has meant a lot to me during this time, and, yeah. So, I started playing MCOC way back when it first had launched, um, and this was when I had been on iPhone, and I had an account connected to iTunes, and this was, like, pre-12.0 and everything, and back then, I honestly don't remember much about the game, but I do remember playing it, I remember having an account, and I remember how good, um, Doctor Strange was back then. I think that was the main one that I had been playing with, especially after the Doctor Strange movie came out. I remember that a lot. 
Um, and yeah, that was a pretty damn good time. And then I had quit. Um, well, I wasn't able to get my old account back since that was exclusively connected to iTunes, and I no longer had an Apple phone when I came back. And I believe I came back sometime in August of 2019 or so. Um, and yeah, it started out quite casually. Um, I think the first two allies that I joined had been Iceberg and then E513, which, um, you know, running like map five and max six AQ between the two of them doing, I think some Alliance war. Don't remember if I did Alliance war in either of those allies. Um, and yeah, that had been pretty fun. I really liked the Alliance side of things had been a lot more fun than the solo side of things for me always just the Alliance side of things has definitely been my main enjoyment of this game, the strategy with Alliance or especially later on was amazing and yeah iceberg and even 513 um fairly casual level of playing at those points but you know was still a really good time and then the first like competitive alliance i joined was when i started to like take the game like properly serious i joined 214 ps um which at the time, I believe they had fallen down to Plat 4 when I was first joining them. Um, but yeah, a Platinum Alliance 4 ally, which is, you know, a lot of, you know, which takes a lot to, like, play at that level. A lot of people are, like, constantly calling Platinum levels low tier war, and I think, you know, kind of disrespectful, having played, a, you know, pretty much every level of Alliance or a lot of those pot in the morning swords times, especially when you're, you know, someone punching up in a cat ring, so it's still taken, like, a lot to be able to compete at that level. Um, and yeah, I joined them, I believe, in season 19, which was, like, summer 2020, I believe, around that time. In the first two seasons, I'd been in Battle Group 1, and Battle Group 1 was a lot of fun, I had some friends there, like, um, Masrio, I don't know what his name used to be, I'm forgetting it. I think it was like Noobtastic or something, but he changed his name to Masrio Paulus for a while and like, and Kisser and BG Wad, and that was a really good time. That was the first time it really felt like, you know, the Alliance thing had been like, oh, community, really joking, fun thing that had been a blast. The competitive nature of Alliance War was great for me, brought out all of the competitive nature that I naturally have. It's it was a lot of fun playing in um Battle Group One in there and then um I got banned for Mutant Treasure Island shortly after that and then so of course I had to take the rest of whatever season that was off. Um and yeah, I abused the exploit, got like one point two million gold for Mutant Treasure Island, got banned for a week. It was pretty funny. <laughs> um but yeah, after that, I had joined back and went to BG2. Um, and yeah, BG2 is where I first started doing like officer work for Alliance War and everything. And this is actually where I first started planning. And a lot of the planning had come from like talking to my friend, the Iron Patriot, who at the time was in NXS. He was playing like P1 Masters War, and we would, you know, PM like literally every war, talk about war planning, talk about everything. And we had been talking about war and PMs for, like, ages. <laughs> it was a really fun time. Um, and yeah. And that's when I first started planning. And when I started planning, that's when I, like, really got hooked, got hooked. I believe the planning for me started in Season 21 or Season 22. One of those seasons. I'm pretty sure it's Season 21. I've been saying Season 21. Don't remember that clearly. It's quite a long time ago now. But it was when I joined BG2. Um, and yeah, BG2 was great. I ended up also doing a lot of recruiting for that. Um, and I was able to recruit a lot of people I had met over like Discord and everything. And that ended up being a really fun time. At one point in that BG2 of 214PS, I ended up with a battle group full of like people that I considered like friends, pretty much full battle group of that. And that had been a really good time. I believe at that time, the battle group was like Cylonic, Devate, Gavin, Max, T 
Tiny Jack, Agent, Philip, myself, and Boom Pal, I believe. Uh, oh yeah, and Shing. And that battle group too was a lot of fun. Honestly, some of the most fun I've ever had playing this game. That was when I had still had like an extremely small account. To keep things in perspective, when I first joined like 2 and 4 and everything, my account was way smaller than an account needs to be for Platinum War, so I'd always been like punching up a lot. And I still had like an extremely small account for the vast majority of that time. Um, and in 2 and 4, I believe like when I first joined in like season 19, season 20, I was maining like um, Corvus a lot. That was really fun. The Corvus times in Alliance War back in like season 19 to season 20 was just fight hogging with Corvus because that was, I believe, during the time when people had still placed with Flow a lot and there would be like Iron Man Affinity Wars on Mixmaster and shit all the time and it was, you know, a lot of Corvus charges. Um, and yeah. And then. When I got into battle groups too, I moved what I, what champs I was manning quite a bit. I ended up like trying to like actually get good, get good at the game at that point. Um, this is when I started to learn a bunch of different champs. For a large amount of time, I was still manning like Archangel and Corvus, and this is around the time that Apocalypse had first came out. So we had some people that pulled Apocalypse really early, and we were like one of the first to just start fully abusing that Horseman Archangel. And this was when people would barely placed champs with immunities so horsemen archangels could just run through like half of a map it was a really good time <laughs> abusing all that stuff when apoc first came out it was really silly um corvus was still broken especially you know stubborn and that's when i also started um sending everyone with doom during stubborn this is where this came from was around the time like season 21 season 22 I hadn't actually pulled Doom for a very long time, um, but I had been like talking with IP, and of course, IP, the other biggest Doom simp, <laughs> you know, was telling me to send Doom everywhere. And this is when I started like actually sending Doom everywhere, way before I had actually pulled it myself. Um, and that was really fun, just absolutely abusing the fuck out of Doom during this time in 2 and 4. Um, and yeah, my champs ended up changing quite a lot of what I mean throughout 2 and 4, just because. This was a time where I had been actually like one of the weaker players in the battle group, which was interesting. Uh, you know, I, not exactly weaker player, but a lot less consistent. I would die to a lot of easy fights back in this time and then would like solo bosses and the hard fights, but then die to some random fight. I remember dying to like a, Matag a Matador Aegon. <laughs> It was, it was a good time. The jokes about all that stuff were really fun back then. Um, but yeah, the champs I ended up mating during this time ended up shifting, like, pretty much constantly. There was a long period of Corvus and Archangel, those are definitely the big original two. And then there was, like, Quake, Magic, G99, um, Ghost, those are another big set of ones. And then when Protect came around, this is when I, like, fully started maining Quake, G99, OG A-Bomb, all the time, those three. Um, and that had, like, turned in fully into my thing. And that had been a really fun time. The OG A-Bomb and G99 war was, um, with, like, taking Thing and APOC bosses every war was a really fun time. Um, Quake wars were honestly surprising, surprisingly fun. There were a bunch of, like, stupid Quake fights that I would end up doing, like doing like window of opportunity encroaching quake fights stuff like that which you know you have to do very specific timing to be able to quake doing a bunch of stupid stuff like that especially during stubborn was honestly quite a good time <laughs> you know quake gets a lot of hate but i i genuinely enjoyed my time quake maining in war there was definitely a point where it started to become very boring after doing it for so many seasons but you know honestly at the time quite enjoyed it um, what other big champs was I manning during that point? I think I covered the big ones. Um, and yeah, that had been a ton of fun. Um, and then at the end of my time in 2 and 4 was when I finally started, like, making pushes for solo content to, like, actually push forward. And this is also when I started planning for a second battle group in 2 and 4. I started planning for BG3, um, and that was really fun. I had some other great friends in BG3, like, um, Spider, Mega, Bova, and Ultra, 
Um, and that was a good time. Um, planning for two ages. This was like peak COVID, so I was basically not going outside uh, with the Ipecanjo, which was not a good time, but yeah. yeah. Kept me distracted, which was great. Um, and yeah, that was a really good time, planning for BG3 as well. Um, and that's when I also started to like actually take solo content and stuff seriously instead of basically just playing Alliance War. And I explored Act 6 and everything, that's when I like pulled OGA Bomb, pulled Nick Fury, pulled um, Doctor Doom, all these champs that I would then like go on to main forever was like Act 6 exploration around that time. Started getting like rank 3s and stuff. Um, and yeah, that was a really good time in 2 and 4. Really appreciated my time there. Um, yeah, it was one of the best allies I've been in. The community in 2 and 4 is, you know, second to very few. It's, it's a great ally. Um, and I think they're still going pretty hard. Um, if anyone's looking to play Platinum War, very much recommend them. It's a great group of people. Uh, yeah, really enjoyed my time in 214. Had been a fantastic time. And yeah. And then after I left 214, I took a break for a season. I think I had something with medical issues or like a surgery pop up. Took a break for a season. Um, and yeah, during that break, I think I ended up just going to like an AQ only ally. Um, and yeah, for that season. I ended up playing map 7 AQ. I forget what ally that was, but there was a map 7 AQ only ally. Played map 7 a lot, um, which was dreadful. Map 7 was fucking awful. Oh my god, I do not miss map 7 AQ. That shit was awful. <laughs> Can't believe people played map 7 so much. Forgot to mention, 2 and 4 always did map 5 AQ. Was going up to like P2, P3 at war, but the... AQ always stayed at map 5. Map 7 AQ was so awful back in the day. Oh my god, that was not a good time. And yeah. And then, season 28, I ended up joining FSI. Planned Warfare there. I think we ended up in P uh, P1, I believe. Um, and honestly, less said about FSI, the better. Did not enjoy my time there all that much. Not a great culture fit for me. Um, but yeah. Then, after... Um, FSI, uh, I was, you know, trying to find another P1 or Masters ally. I ended up finding Gompi, which was a pretty good time. I stayed there for two seasons. I knew a lot of the people from Gompi on Discord, so that was nice. Specifically, like, uh, Bryce and Amanda. Spent two seasons in there. I remember we had a war where we beat four Loki, and that was, like, felt like a big, like, turning point in my MCOC time, like, beating four Loki in a war. That was, like a huge deal at the time. It had been, like, a really good war for Gomp. And in Gomp, there was also a time where my battle group had, like, back-to-back -back donuts. And yeah, that was definitely, like, the turning point when I was like, oh, damn, I'm, like, actually good at this stuff. And this is also when I started to, like, actually abuse Doom on my own account, because I had I did not have Doom for pretty much the entire time in 214 until I left, pretty much. And this is when I started using Doom. I believe the first season in FSI was, like, the first season using Doom in Alliance War for me. And then in Gomp, I started to, like, fully abuse it, doing all the dumb shit. I did in FSI as well, actually. I took, like, 101 fights that season in FSI. Uh, but yeah, and in Gomp, I also ended up pulling Nick Fury. Um, not pulling Nick Fury, awakening Nick Fury. I had him unawakened for a long time. And then in season 30, I started abusing Nick Fury a lot, and that was really fun. In season 29, I'd been abusing Mole Man a lot as well, and that was really fun, of course. Um, and yeah, my time in Gomp was really good. And yeah. Um, and this was also the time I had joined, like, Vegas Discord server. Met a lot of great friends from there, specifically, like, um, Jacob, and then a lot of the SSX guys, who I'll talk about later. Um, spent a lot of time in, um, SSX with a lot of the friends I had made from Discord, and that was, of course, a great time, but yeah, like, Jacob and Charger and a lot of great people from Vegas Discord and Vega himself, of course, great friend group from that, and yeah, after Gomp, um, ended up leaving for a lot of reasons, um, uh, but a lot of it was just an opportunity thing, and also I did not like being in a European battle group with US Eastern time zones, um, but yeah, ended up joining SSX, 
Um, and originally I was going to be in battle group three, I believe, with DLL and everyone. Um, but then, um, I forget who the planner was that had left. Oh no, it was M1. M1 had been planning BG2 and then he left that season. And from there I ended up taking over, swapped to BG2 and started planning for BG2 pretty much immediately. And then, you know, SSX BG2 was where I had like first really stuck. Um, I believe my first season in SSX, I achieved the 100 death of the streak that had, I think I was at like 70 or something from Gomp and achieved that 100 death of the streak in SSX my first season there. So that was really fun. Met a lot of great friends in SSX across, you know, the entire ally. Really was a great time. Like DLL, Campo, Na, Bryce, um, Bean, Jolly, a lot of great people in SSX. It had been a really good time. Rob Hop especially, and all the guys who we would play like game nights with on those board game calls where we would play code names. Slay met him in SSX as well. Or no, I'd known him a bit before SSX, and then we were in the same battle group for a season in SSX. That was really fun. Um, and yeah. Yeah, those first four seasons, I believe we got Masters every season with SSX during that time. They had gotten like P1 the season before I joined. Um, after the half season, there was a half season that kind of screwed SSX over. Um, then after that, they got P1 and then ended up getting Masters with them in season 30, season 31. And then in season 32, we ended up getting top three in season 32, which was insane. I remember that final war where we beat Noon and the score was like four to six or something. And oh my God, the way the chat just went fucking crazy after we beat Noon to get top three. That, I'll never forget that day, that it was, it was a great time. Uh, and then season 33, season 34, another couple of Masters finishes. I was feeling pretty good about SSX, and, uh, yeah, decided to go to Noon at that point to push for top three. Um, and for Noon, and this was, again, around the time, um, some AW changes were taking place, so a lot of people, like, took seasons off and stuff. The first season I joined in noon, I believe, was like an off season where we weren't pushing. Um, but we still ended up getting like masters, I think. And then we started actually pushing. We only ended up getting top three actually like once in noon, but I had a great time in noon still. A lot of great people I met there. Sam, Finn, B Lee. B Lee especially. I had a great time with them. Um, Legacy Lion. Good people in noon. Um, Frank ended up joining noon as well. A lot of good people I knew in Noon. It was a really fun time being in Noon. Um, yeah, definitely very stressful pushing for top three, but a really good time and yeah. And then I ended up joining SSS ba SSX back, I believe season 38, or no, not season 38. I believe it was like season 39 or 40, one of those seasons. And we got top 10 finishes three seasons in a row. And yeah. A lot of great friends I've met across Noon, SSX, and 214PS especially. A lot of great friends I've met over like Vegas Discord. A lot of great friends I've met in the community in general as well. Um, like JoJo and some other people across like various Discord servers. And yeah, this game has meant a lot for me during such a fairly hard time in my life with the hypochondria and COVID just going fucking crazy. But yeah, getting back to a really good point in my life and really happy with how things are going. I may end up uploading more YouTube videos about like other things than MCOC. We'll see. I don't currently have any plans to, but would enjoy that. Just depends how things go. And yeah, having a really great time. Hope you guys are doing well in your lives as well. Having a good time, having fun with whatever you guys are pursuing. And yeah, wish you all the best. Take care.